is in fact covered a railroad bridge over Eagle River, fell in with a train in the bridge, fell into the river, and that uh, set the river on fire, and there was lime and oil cars attached. It wasn't a passenger train, fortunately. And uh, so the river was actually a fire. If anybody ever tells you, the river caught fire. <laughs> It happened. <laughs> Even though I say the town was dull and not much excitement, things did occur. Uh, very early on, before my time here, uh, Newt Glutzenheiser was one of the law officers, and uh, he was a very energetic fellow. Some, uh, I don't know if they were bank robbers or who they were, but some characters of some sort had come through here and were spotted, but they didn't catch them in town. He got in a rig and pursued them and ran along the horse alongside their buggy and jumped in the back of their buggy and pulled the gun on them, got them stopped. Wild chase. <laughs> <laughs> Later on, in the early 30s, John Dillinger used to send letters to banks and so forth that he was coming to rob them. And he sent communications to this bank. And he'd send messages in the community that he was coming and so forth. They had the Indiana terrorized. Uh, he was a hometown boy from Mooresville, Indiana, that went wrong and uh, had a gang of outlaws with him and uh, had the governor, McNutt, just terrorized. It was, he went out with an armed bodyguard when he even crossed the street in Indianapolis. And uh, finally, uh, Dillinger uh, had forays all across Indiana and Ohio and over into Illinois, I believe. Uh, the Bankers Association and so forth finally set up such awards and made such demands. He killed a number of people, he shot them right down in the banks. And uh, over at Mentone, Indiana, uh, they robbed a bank on to the west of there, I believe. And I went downtown one day and began to hear what a hero my brother-in-law was. He was in the bank, Mentone. And they said he'd been out in a cornfield firing gunshot at somebody, <laughs> one of these malefactors. And they caught them. and. Um, had quite a time, but uh, it was a very, uh, very serious matter, and uh, these armed desperados. So then this summer, they said that Dillinger was coming in here, and everybody on Main Street that could handle the gun, and about everybody did, because many people hunted in those days, and there were also a lot of deer guns, and uh, there were just arms everywhere. Everybody had guns stalked back behind windowsills and so forth. And, uh, they intended to make a real resistance to them if they came in. And uh, uh, Newt Lotzenheiser spent the summer up over um, one of the stores in a, at a window across from the bank with a deer rifle aimed at the door of the bank. Uh, if any disturbance started, he was prepared to shoot, and would have too. And uh, then the bank hired a fellow, but I guess I was telling you the other day, a fellow by the name of Carl Calhoun who'd been a drill sergeant in the Army, among other things. And uh, he uh, stood out in front of the bank with the keys and unlocked the door when people wanted in and uh, uh, let them all out also. And uh, he had two, I remember having seen him down there, he had two bandoliers and had a shotgun standing beside him. He had two Colt revolvers and uh, I don't know what other armament, but uh, he was prepared for the worst. But this went on into the summer. And uh, Dillinger said he was coming. I sent word that he was coming. Well, the town was just all on alert, but didn't show up. And the story was that he had come and looked around and decided this was no place for him. So for all that we were ready for him, he never came. And uh, um, you say you remember the night Presta Vickery got shot. Would you want to go on that a little bit more? Uh, well. Um, a fellow who drove for me, I kept the driver almost all the time because we ranged over quite a territory here. And uh, he had taken me out in the country, out on the way to Bippus, beyond Serbia. And uh, it was a terrible night. I remember the awful fog that was just thick. And uh, when we came back, we crossed the Erie track, and he stopped and didn't hear anything and crossed. And, when we got well across and down just a little bit, the train whistled for the crossing. And it was that bad at night. So he came into town and uh, uh, he took me home. And uh, when he went back, he lived uptown. Uh, he talked to Presley on the corner. 
and uh, down here on the corner of uh, Walnut and uh, Main Street. And he supposedly was the last person that ever had any conversation with him outside of the fellow who was with him at the time. That was a tragic happening. It shouldn't ever have occurred, and uh, it, was, it was just too bad. <laughs>